Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about Bootstrap Forms. Forms are an integral part of any dynamic website. Even for that matter, when you talk about a static website, that too requires some kind of forms in the way of contact us or lead generation, etc. So as a designer, as a developer, if you don't know about forms, your knowledge is incomplete. So let's complete that knowledge by learning about bootstrap forms in this episode. Let's get started. This is part 28 of the series. Uh, make sure that you check out the entire playlist. Uh, I am planning around 40 hands-on tutorials with live examples also. I have done some in the past. Uh, so make sure that you go through all of those tutorials to learn the entire bootstrap 5 in detail. Alright, so following is the index I have covered so far. I have done few live projects also as part of this particular series. So make sure you check them out. Um, so today we are on episode number 28. We are learning about bootstrap forms. Alright, so important thing that I want you to remember about forms is this. That there are different types of form controls, right? There are different form controls like you have type equal to text, type equal to email, which is nothing but basically input type type equal to input and then you have radio you have checkbox you have select drop down etc each of this will require two things one is the label one is the actual form control okay so label represents what um, what is the description of that particular form field and form control is the actual form uh, field that you will be implementing Right. A good example of which can be seen something like this. If you see here, it's a div and we are giving a label and then we are giving form label, right? Email address. And then we have input type equal to email. But here it can be different like input type equal to text, input type equal to say radio, checkbox, etc. And you will have the form control class equal to form control. So those are the two main important classes that you should remember when we are working with forms, right? Enough of talking. Now let's get back to doing some hands on. So I'm going to use this uh, template that we have done previously in this particular playlist and we'll continue to build on it. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this further and this is where we are at. So I'm going to close this div right here and then I'm going to inside this 10 column grid. Uh, what I'm going to do is this is for that. This is for the inf inspection table that we have added. And under this, let's say I'm going to add a div and I'm going to call it say learning forms. So the reason I'm not doing it in a separate file is also because I want you to learn how to extend any existing pages. OK, that's my motivation behind this. So we have this form and let's add some form right here. Right. Or I'm going to say add inspection form. OK. So let's say we are these are the inspections and here we are adding a add inspection form. Let's see how that looks out. H1 is too big. Let's make it H2. Now we are adding forms. So the like I told you, you should remember two things. One is the label and one is the actual form control, right? It, it would be simple like this if you don't add anything, right? But what we are going to do is we are going to assign a class and say form label. And this would be class equal to form control. Save it. So now you see the blue color highlight. Right. So that is where it will tell us that what exactly um, if you see that blue color highlight, that means that's a pretty much um, a good um, indicator that your class is getting applied to it. OK. And as all like all always, we'll, let's go back to documentation. And then let's start searching and say we are looking for forms. And these are the form controls. And so this is the example I was talking about. So you have your um, ID that you will provide for example input email and the same will go for the label. right? So let's add that in our application. 
so here you will say label for equal to and say let's call this um, title and here you'll give ID is equal to title right and then I'm going to copy this div for now so inside since it's inside a form we're going to put it in a form and then just align all the other things together and then we have let's say um, uh, let's say first title right um, inspection title okay so you see the inspection title that comes up here and this is the input type equal to text now what I want you to do is let's learn all the different combinations that are available so here you would put say description and copy that description so this is how you keep on building a form with different controls so now instead of input type equal to this I'm going to say text area then close it down so now I have a multi-line text area right this is a single line input which is input type equal to text and here I have input type text area which is uh, multiple lines that we can enter that is the second example now similarly if you want to keep on adding further I'm going to copy this input so let's see what else uh, you can recollect right so you have type equal to text type equal to email right email address then you have phone number so you can use all the HTML um, things that you want to use right so you have the input type equal to text and if you want to refer to that um, you can use W3 schools uh, form or you can just type input and you can you can get so many you can get reference to all the things like type equal to text and you have these are all the types that can go into it right type equal to number so this should be number and then so if you see number you will see this up and down that you can move so this is number here you need to enter something um, valid right this is not an email so it would be in invalid um, same way you have date you have color you have checkbox number right and you have email you have hidden and so on so I'll leave it up to you so that you can put others I'm going to show you some important things uh, which is checkbox so for checkbox and radio button it's a little different so I'm going to show you that and here let's say going to, we have an email here so I'm going to copy this for checkbox it's a little different so that's why I want to show it to you so instead of form label right for the checkbox it's always form check input form check input that is what is the label right and um, form check label always and here it will be form check input okay that's the class name so you can see here um, you can see input type equal to checkbox and now you can see so this is a checkbox right now same thing input radio right so you have the radio button now I think the class name I got it wrong let's check radio checkbox and radios and I think the approach is something similar with it yeah this is also same input, input. 
input checkbox label same thing copy it again for radio just make it radio and here okay available label on phone yes or no okay and here you put phone yes and you'll give the same name okay so if you don't give same name you can select both them that's why name should be given now here I'm going to say phone avail phone avail is for for both and that's it so here you are going to give okay so now you can see either one you can select with checkbox you can select multiple okay now this was about uh, type equal to text description this is number we have seen number this is checkbox radio now I'm going to show you uh, one more important thing which is the select okay so that is another thing which is very very important select drop down right so you should see drop down so here you have the class is form select okay that's what we would use and you can just copy it here and inside this you can put and say form form select and form select label okay okay so this is open the select menu you don't want this let's say direct value so now here I'm going to change and say uh, select an option below so you can see this is the option th that you can provide okay now styling etc can always be adjusted okay now let's fork it out and make it into different different grids also you can do that so if you are having a row right so you can say div class equal to row and inside this you can say div class equal to say if you want two column layout or if you want two in a row then you can just fork it here inside this put it here now you would have two inputs these two inputs in two different columns so see this is 50 50 right now um, similarly you can go on with having their grids right how you want to your grids to be if you want three in a row you can make it call hyphen three that means four now you can when you say three you can have four fields in it if you want to have only three you can have four four like this like you can have three in a row okay so that's again up to you uh, us like how we want our grid to be designed uh, I am putting three column here if you see just for your knowledge okay so now you see three in a row so again the forms can be designed any way we want uh, important thing that you should understand is it would have a label it would have a form control okay now those based on that you can design basically these are the form elements that you would require in any form perfect uh, I think that's all I wanted to cover today uh, please go through the form things here that you see uh, you have input group also where you can show an icon next to that um, which is again uh, just a div it would have a input group it would have a input group text and then followed by the input type right so if you just copy this also you can see it here so if you see the input group you can see the icon or the any text you want to put it it cannot be just this if you put INR right so that also can be there or if you want to put say USD so this is basically any text that you want to uh, append before right and same way you can do this uh, after also so there is an option where you can do uh, prepend and append also like here you can see uh, placeholder input type and if you move that input group to the bottom it would be aligned afterwards instead of before now here 
at example.com is coming at the end here it is at the front right so this is input group that you want to add so those are some of the again you have some more options these are all design things like floating variable like much like material design um, so go ahead for that also again like I'll tell don't spend too much time in remembering the classes because that will not do any good to you uh, instead what I would encourage is start using the documentation for your best you should know what the concepts are but don't try to buy hard the code it won't help you all right so this is a floating floating form so you will use floating form again this concept is same you will have a form control and you will have a label to it right the only difference is in this div there is floating form all righty so that covers all our input uh, form related um, fields uh, we'll probably do one um, full-fledged example live example where I will walk you through the entire um, setting up of a form and maybe make it more beautiful layout wise that's something that we'll do it later for now let's keep learning about all the components that's it for in today's episode if you like my work and tutorials please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash art tutorials I'll see you in the next episode we will learn about bootstrap range component thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode